another outlier vlog. Um, today I am racing, so I haven't raced in like six months, so this should be fun. But the point of this vlog is actually going to be to go through the different foods and everything of how I do my day on race day. It's a question I get a lot. A lot of people have like nervous stomachs and can't really um, eat and everything like that throughout the day. So people are always curious like, oh, what should I eat? So this might be a little bit helpful, might also not be that helpful because I personally don't have that much of a, uh, a nervous stomach when it comes to racing. Um, I just don't put that pressure on myself. So um, we'll actually talk about a little bit like uh, breathing regulations and stuff like that, controlling the nervous system so that you maybe don't get as nervous and then you can digest better. But we'll take you through the day, show you what it looks like. Um, and we'll get the morning started actually with uh, some greens juice, so just a simple greens powder and some water. And then we're going to add actually some pink Himalayan salt to that so we can get our electrolytes up since we've been asleep for the last eight hours or so. And um, yeah, I'll show you everything else as we go. <music> yogurt for higher protein in the morning top that with some organic peanut butter which is literally just peanut butter none of the extra oils and everything like that organic pumpkin seeds and organic blueberries so then over here we have what is my version of french toast we got eggs mixed with vanilla extract um, and Ceylon cinnamon which is really good for blood sugar control dip some sourdough bread in that, cook it up, easy peasy on that. And then I even have a little bit of ground meat just for extra protein. So big protein heavy breakfast, but I do have some carbohydrates in there, some fats in there. I even put um, maple syrup on top. So this is actually a pretty typical breakfast for me. Might seem big for some people, but this is gonna hold me up through uh, practice, which practice is in an hour and a half up at the track so this will be perfect because I should be all digested by the time that comes around and this will be some good fuel for me to utilize during the early day. All right we're about to head out to the track I only live like 15 minutes from the track so it's 7 o'clock gonna get there about 7 15 or so get the bike prepped get everything ready for practice at 8 however wanted to touch on that breakfast that uh, you just saw me have big breakfast right but I made sure that with those carbohydrates, I had the protein and I had the fats to actually slow the digestion of those carbohydrates so it doesn't spike my blood sugar as much, which will hopefully lead to less of a crash later on and more sustainable energy throughout the day and everything. And, you know, I mentioned hydration as well. With the hydration, you know, what I'm going to do today is my baseline is going to be roughly uh, half my body weight in ounces, so I'm about 170. So I'm going to roughly hit 85 ounces as my baseline. Now, I'm going to be doing strenuous activity today. Therefore, I'm going to need to boost those numbers up quite a bit. I'm probably going to be hitting like a range of like 120 to 130, which is roughly a gallon. But I'm going to be incorporating in a lot of electrolytes as well. And this is total fluid intake. This just isn't um, water itself. So I have like coconut water with me and stuff that I'm going to have that will... Um, also contribute to those total ounces but um, should be fun today today's my first day or first time racing a uh, pro class so 30a here we come see how it goes <laughs>
this uh, track's amazing actually it's really really good um, moto 16 out of 25 so I actually got a little while before I go get a gate drop but we're gonna be looking at what I'm gonna be eating throughout the day and everything like that but it's gonna be a little while before I think I'm gonna eat I might have a little snack before moto 1 and then probably have lunch after moto 2 but I'm gonna be hydrating electrolytes until then um, I'm gonna get completely out of my gear as well so I'm going to make sure that my body is recovering because it's gonna be 80 degrees today luckily we got air conditioning in the trailer so that will help keep it cool um, preserve as much energy as possible but yeah it really should be should be fun I got 15 guys in my class um, for a 30a so we'll see how that goes but hopefully fitness and um, good nutrition will be the difference maker and maybe they're they're not doing as good on those ends and I can get them towards the end of uh, end of the moto or something so should be fun we'll see what happens but we'll keep checking back and then once I kind of eat I'll explain why I'm eating what I'm eating and when I'm eating it and that will give us more insight and you more insight of what you can do on a race day or just when you're out riding all right so said I was gonna talk about hydration levels and everything during um, race day which really isn't gonna be any different than like a normal day of like high activity and I also have my wife Erin here so she might chime in and give a little insight but so when it comes to hydration one of the biggest things is there's so many different formulas and so many different things that a lot of people say and it's kind of tough to know which one's going to be best unless you try them out but ultimately for me what's worked really well is I don't really count my ounces do you count ounces of water but I think that's because we've done it for so long. It's yeah. kind of like counting macros. Yeah. Where like once you've done it, like you don't really need to do it anymore. You just kind of like get a sense of what it is. Yeah, and also having like a hydro flask water bottle or just like a water bottle that has like X amount of ounces in it. You kind of like learn, you know, okay, this, this is 32 ounces. Yeah, I yeah. I need to three of these. Yeah. But I'm fine. Um, but hydration really the majority of hydration should come in the morning because well if you're doing activity during the day it doesn't really do you any good to hydrate later to try and make up for it so like you don't have to make up for it as much later if you're hydrated before so and it's also going to enhance your performance if you're just getting hydrated ahead of time anyway rather than playing catch up the whole time throughout the day especially like when it comes to motocross and stuff because the days can be really long like me being moto 16 out of 25 is going to be a a super a super long day so i'm gonna have to make sure that my hydration prior to that is pretty good which so far so good but a pretty simple formula to like start off with would be roughly your body weight cut in half in ounces that's gonna be like your baseline so that's your bare minimum amount that you need in a day so i weigh about 170 so that's roughly 85 ounces for me that's like bare minimum 85 ounces I didn't perspray, I didn't um, work out, I didn't ride, I didn't do anything. Now, that will at least keep me afloat. Um, it's not gonna necessarily be like the best. Um, and then during the day, I don't know, I, I personally, throughout the day, away from like my minimums, what I really feel like I do is um, try to not get to a point where I feel like I need to chug water because typically if you're getting to the point where you feel like you need to chug it you're behind um, or look at uh, body feedback like when you go to the bathroom what's the color um, typically when we use the restroom and say it's not a great color it's darker that's an indication of about two hours ago because we don't just drink fluid and then it instantly goes out of our body it takes an hour or two for it to actually flow through everything so that's gonna be a, a feedback, but it's a feedback of two hours ago. It's not a feedback of in that moment. I know definitely I've uh, been dehydrated, but I know that I just drank a lot. And so I know that I'm probably gonna be good, but just try not to let it get, uh, get too yellow or brown. If you're in that zone, you're in trouble. Uh, but it also shouldn't be like watery clear. Watery clear, most likely you're overhydrated you're going to be depleting yourself yep of your electrolytes and that's just i would say just as bad at that point 
So you want to make sure that you're kind of keeping that balance. I, I would say lemonade, like watery lemonade. Not, watery lemonade. Yeah, yeah. More like like lemon water rather than like heavy lemon lemon lemonade. But um, there should be like a little tinge of color, but not clear. Um, second to that is the Galpin formula. So Galpin formula is your body weight divided by three. And that's how many ounces of water you should replenish with every 15 minutes during exercise, which I've done the math on this and it equals about the same thing as like if you weigh yourself before exercise and then you weigh yourself after and you lose a pound, you should replenish with 150% of what you just lost. So if you lost a pound, that's 16 ounces, means you need to replenish with 24 ounces. In my Galpin formula, if I'm if I just reduce it down to 150, just do easy math. Um, so 150 divided by 30 is five. So if I'm going to be doing an hour of activity, I would be taking in 20 ounces because I'd be taking in five ounces every 15 minutes. But if I actually go to my actual body weight, it's exactly the same at 24 ounces. So to me, it's for my body weight, it equals the same as just doing a replenishment of 150 percent. Could you do so? It's that every 15 minutes could you just do that at the end or is it different yeah that's more so because like chugging water during exercise isn't actually like advised yeah like if i'm running like no. you get like sloshy stomach you or, sip. Or, or, like if you're like if you're lifting weights isn't no, that you, much but you're also not sweating that much no you should probably just be sipping your water during exercise that's where the whole like being hydrated prior to is so helpful because then you're not feeling like you're playing catch up during your workout mm -hmm. um but as far as like your afterwards, if you worked out for 60 minutes, you know, then you can just multiply that number by four and try and have that at least be a target to replenish with. Um, so it, it's tough. Like don't, don't spend a lot of your time like weighing yourself and then weighing yourself after and things like that. Cause unless you're like stripping completely nude and then drying yourself off and like all this stuff, like it's actually a really big task to do that, which is funny. That's what they taught us in undergrad. Like, oh, I mean, yeah, I guess it's like accurate, but it's, like, it's, it's not realistic. Very accurate as far as how like what the outcome is but it's not realistic and i mean if you really want to know like your sweat rate too because that's a big thing everyone sweats at different rates so um they make patches i think even gatorade actually makes a sweat patch i feel like i saw that yeah. like seven years ago yeah gatorade makes one but then you can see like if you're a heavy sweater if you're uh, sweating a lot of salt because everybody perspirates differently and everybody loses um minerals differently as well so um, it's kind of a way to see, but I, I, I feel like that's just like reaching too far. It's like get your hydration, listen to your body feedback, drink electrolytes, ha good quality electrolytes, something that is actually higher in sodium, something of like 800 milligrams to 1,000 milligrams, and then has a good ratio of potassium to sodium so that that potassium sodium pump of the heart doesn't get overloaded with the sodium. And a lot of people are scared of that. So things like Element, Relight, um, Pro Mix, mine when it comes out, um, have those ratios and stuff. So that's the better ones to do. And I'm actually gonna drink one here pretty quick because um, I got Moto One coming up probably in like Just 30 minutes. Just try to minutes. check your watch. Yeah. <laughs> um, used to wearing the watch. Um, but yeah, it's coming up pretty quick. So I'm probably gonna start drinking um, some fluids and maybe have a little bit of sugar um, in this case that is appropriate I'm not gonna be sitting on my butt on the couch so having a little bit of sugar in my system is a-okay I'm gonna need it so um, I think I do an extra lap doing the profile so far we'll see how my fitness is I feel pretty good on the bike and whatnot but I haven't really like put down like hard laps so we'll see how it goes all right so did moto number one how did I do? You did great. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Good job. It was it was very tough, and racing the A class is really intense, and everyone just like holds the throttle on longer and doesn't break. <laughs> I, I don't know. I'm I starting to get the hang of it, like in the middle of the moto, like start to hit corners better, and then I got so just like beat down by the pace. I wasn't ready for that but now I know I didn't know going into it what it was gonna be like but I just had lunch um, which actually was a little bit of a leftover from our lunch yesterday when we went snowboarding up at the mountain which was delicious so 
for me, like I mentioned already, I'm not really like a big like nervous um, racer. I was a little bit nervous before my moto because I didn't know what to expect. But as far as eating goes, like I can eat just fine on race day, um, pretty normal. I do try and eat a little bit differently, like emphasis on like protein and a little more carbohydrate. But um, as far as what I had today, I did cream cheese with smoked salmon mix that up and put it on a bagel so i'm kind of getting everything in there fat protein um, carbohydrate but i didn't eat that before the moto i just ate it afterwards because before the moto i just had a i don't know would, would you call that a protein bar sure the pro mix things yeah <laughs> so it's supposed to be like a protein bar one of my clients gave it to me it was all right it served a purpose for energy but I was also drinking a lot of electrolytes and stuff before that moto, and I'll drink some more. I had some coconut water, which also had some sugars to it, so um, not just salt, magnesium, potassium, but also a little bit of some carbohydrate from that. But I'm probably going to eat some more. I have like some sweet potato, um, sweet chips. potato chips, yeah. But the thing about chips, so let's be clear on this, chips themselves aren't the worst thing ever, right? They're potatoes, like potatoes is our, our starch and carbohydrate, it's what they're cooked in that typically is a no-go. So, you know, seed oils and vegetable oils are typically what most things are, or most chips are cooked in. These are um, cooked in coconut oil. coconut oil. And avocado oil would be fine too, but you just kind of have to look around a little bit for those options as far as um, those oils and those chips go, pay attention to that then also look out for like just like a ton of different ingredients the only ingredients in this are sea salt coconut oil and the sweet potato so three ingredients pretty simple so i'll have some of those and i'll probably just snack until the second moto but i'll stop snacking probably like 30 minutes ahead and then just focus on um, fluid intake rather because we want to let those um things digest and get through the gut and down into um the lower gut which would be our intestines and stuff so that we're not sloshing around and we're also uptaking the nutrients from them so not a great idea to have you know something really fatty and heavy prior to any sort of activity be it motocross be it running lifting weights you're gonna probably feel kind of shitty with that so you want to um, taper the time and everything like that what if you were a racer what would be your go-to for lunch probably what you just ate yeah probably I like, <laughs> when i was racing i used to eat bagels not motocross but um, she was a professional obstacle course racer just being modest um bagels were always my um go something like super simple i got a really nervous stomach so like oh yeah you wouldn't even do vegetables the night before because mm -mm, of it yeah mm -mm. that's right i had a super nervous stomach when racing so i was just like really plain carbs and protein and like easy digestible fats were like pretty much all I could handle. Um, which, if you want to talk about what to do if you have a nervous stomach. Yes, thank you for bringing that yeah. back up. So if you have a nervous stomach, a lot of times um, that has a lot to do with um, your nervous system response. And so your nervous system has two parts to it, being sympathetic, fight or flight, and parasympathetic, which is rest and digest. So the rest and digest ha says it in it, digest. So. <laughs> racing in general or competing in general is always going to trigger more of that sympathetic um, nervous or nervous system response so what that does is it sends more of the blood out to your periphery uh, or peripheral um, body parts being like your skeletal muscle because you gotta compete and do whatever it is so not really putting blood towards the organs of course there's still there's still blood there but the emphasis isn't inwards for digestion so if you eat while you're in a very sympathetic state you're probably not going to digest very fast um you're going to have a hard time getting away from like stomach cramps and stuff like that because typically like stomach cramps have a lot to do with um pulling water out of our stomach and intestinal lining to help with digestion so hydration off obviously very important for that as well now what you can do is mostly down regulation or breath work so they kind of go hand in hand but what you want to be able to do is like take five ten minutes and just chill and be on your own um having talks with aaron helps me a lot because we're just kind of hanging out it's what we do and that calms me down 
and we can be at home hanging out and I'll have my aura ring on and my aura ring will think I'm napping when we're just like hanging out because it just chills my nervous system so much that it actually reads out of sleep. So what are, I would say for breath work, it's tough though because yeah. if it's right before you're going on, you don't want to down regulate too much because you need to to do up regulation. Right. So we would do the down regulation before eating, which before eating was going to be 40 minutes to an hour plus before going out anyways. So the down regulation should be before eating, it, right? Yeah, like, like if you point. like you wake up in the morning and you have a nervous stomach before a race, like do some down regulation breath work or a meditation or listen to music or whatever you want to do before you eat breakfast that day so you can make sure you get some fuel in you mm-hmm. and then as your day goes on like you don't want to down regulate right before a race because that's not very good <laughs> you don't I want don't, to be like relaxed I, I don't, right before you a know what of- it's funny i don't really know if like it's like possible like your body knows what it's about to do so you can't like, really trick it yeah you can't trick it. It, it it knows that you're about to do something intense and it's it's really hard to fight against that you're not going to be able to you can like focus on your breathing it's not going to be a bad thing to focus on your breath and you know be good with it because a lot of times people compete and hold their breath um so I mean, that's a big thing too you can cut this out but <laughs> um <laughs> no, <I'm not> going <laughs> to. <laughs> getting to the root of why you have a nervous stomach um it's a little like that's a little bit more involved than just like doing some like down regul- like nervous system down regulation but figuring out why you have that nervous stomach like really yeah. asking that question is a big component and then um also when you're not racing how can you tolerate that upregulated state yeah yeah it's practice like i mean eating is practice you have to make sure that you're bringing in quality nutrients all the time that's a practice make sure that you're actually like being conscious when you're eating and not just like scarfing looking at your phone watching tv whatever um and just like recognize like hey i'm putting food in my system for a reason and that's going to help your body digest a lot too even just what like taking two or three like deep breaths before you eat mm-hmm. dinner like that is proven that aid and digestion mm-hmm. alone right there so it's really just slowing down with eating period if you're like a fast eater like you like to scarf food which i'm getting better at <laughs> um that actually doesn't help with digestion either because it, you can overeat really easy so um there's a couple of different ways that um you can just like slow your rolls when it comes to <laughs> eating your food and that will help in digestion which that's same for the track like or a competition in general you really feel uh time constraints right so like oh I gotta go out and do this at this time like I don't have time to eat what do I do now and that's just try to you know stay on a schedule even better because it it does catch up with you and I know a lot of people like to socialize and that's great but also remember you're here doing a sport that is really dangerous so like take it seriously (laughs) otherwise it might bite you in the butt and that's not good Um, so yeah there's there's a few different ways of going about it but um, I think reaching out to myself or reaching out to even Erin at her Instagram, which is just Erin Nystrom. Underscore. Underscore at the end. Erin <laughs> yeah. Nystrom underscore at the end. Can I get just Erin Nystrom? I'll put it. Um, Who's that? Aaron, Aaron. I don't know. <laughs> we'll put Someone's it We'll put it in here, um, and then you can go check her out, and she would be a big help as well for that. And um, I think that kind of covers the down regulation breath work stuff. Sure. 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 Ask if you want to know more. All right. So race recap. Driving on Washougal River Road right now, which, by the way, is the most dangerous road in the state of Washington. Um, but it's beautiful because it's on the river. So I am not going to be looking at the camera, but I'll talk. So day went good. Actually, my like eating and nutrition and hydration and everything was top notch i felt really good my energy was good um i i mean like as good as can be for not racing for seven months so um all things considered not too bad i ended up getting 11th out of 14 and a 30 pro so that's that's a new venture for me that was in our right time definitely a little bit humbling but that's totally the point um, 
I wanted to be uncomfortable today as far as you know my racing goes and how I am doing things in life I just really want to kind of get out of my shell and push myself just a little bit because definitely feel like I've got like a little bit complacent um, and okay with you know just certain things being a certain way so yeah it's a good start and of course can always you know be better but that's the point but I hope that the information that was given in this video was useful and you know if you have questions please drop them in the comments below and um, yeah I'm pretty happy with it I honestly won't race again for like <laughs> three or four weeks I don't know I don't race that much so um, I had to take advantage of today and show y'all what it was like um, to um, you know, come along with me on a race day up at Washougal MX Park. So big shout out to them. I'm very close with them and um, Ryan Huffman, Brendan Huffman, and everyone over there. Really appreciate them. They're great people, and I'm happy to be a sponsor of the track. So super stoked. I'm gonna go home. I'm probably only like five minutes from home now, and my wonderful wife Erin has dinner waiting. So can't get any better than that I think I'm a real winner when it comes right there so um, super excited to get home and eat and probably gonna take an Epsom salt bath cuz feeling that one a little bit but um, if you like these vlogs please let me know so I'll keep doing them and I've got some more coming some more ideas and um, yeah please like subscribe share all that fun jazz and we'll see you next time